morning, church. How y'all doing this morning? How y'all doing this morning? How y'all doing this morning? This morning's scripture will be coming from Psalms 34, 1, 2, 3. Um, please say amen when you get there. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Let us exalt his name together. Let us exalt his name
knowing we're forgiven. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good job, praise team. Amen. 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 Buddy needs some holy water. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The forgiveness that comes to you. Amen. Who came in here feeling guilty this morning? Amen. Who came in here feeling unworthy this morning? Amen. Amen. You came in that way, you don't walk out that way. Amen. Amen.
Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. Amen? We're all here together at this appointed time. So what are you going to get? What are you going to get here today? What are you going to get? Are you going to get that word that pastor is going to deliver and it's going to just penetrate your heart and it's going to let you know that God is speaking directly to you? Right. That God sees you in your secret place? That God knows your secret hurt? Are you going to get that today? And are you going to be able to just walk out of here knowing you're forgiven? Amen. Amen. Knowing that you have hope. Amen. Knowing that you have joy in spite of your circumstance. Amen. Right. Get something here today. Amen. Coming in here and just hanging out with one another from 11 to 1230 isn't what God has planned for us. Amen. Right. He wants us to come in here and get what's right for the taking. Amen. Amen. So he wants us to praise. He wants us to pray. Amen. He wants us to receive that word. He wants us to
Thank you, Barb, for your willingness. And if anyone is intimidated by that, um, don't be. We can get it figured out together. Amen? Amen. All right. So Monday night, we were going to do Bible study. And then Tuesday morning, we're going to wake up and do Tuesday morning prayer. Amen? So Tuesday morning prayer is at 7 o'clock. Again, um, we have a great time just getting on there and starting our day in prayer, going before the Lord with some of the prayer requests in the church and also um, and praise reports. Amen. So Tuesday morning, if you're up, join us. And on Wednesday night, we've been doing Facebook Live Bible study and we're studying in the full armor of God. Amen. And we're having a good time on that Bible study. And so you're welcome to um, just go on to Facebook Live. Um, if you don't have access to our members only page, let me know. Um, we have a Living Grace page that just is for the community to see things that are happening on in Living Grace. And then we have a Living Grace members only page. And that members only page is just so that we can put prayer requests out there. Sometimes you don't want everybody to know your business, right? But on that page, it's where you know there's people in this church that will pray for you and that you can um, you can share what you want to share on the members only page. Amen? Amen. So that's why there's two if anybody is confused. And let's see. Uh, volunteers are still needed. Amen? And um, Christian is right there behind the camera and and I just think about, um, you might even be looking around and saying, well, how many kids do we have here, amen? So our kids, are, our kids are from babies all the way up until they're 18, 19 years old, however long you think you're a kid. <laughs> Come on. Um, how, however long you think you can play kickball. Pastor said, did you bring shoes to play kickball? I said, I'm not playing today. I'm just going to sit down and relax. He's like, yeah, right. <laughs> He's like, you can say that all you want, but you know, once you get out there, you can't lie in church. Yeah, you, just, you, can't, right, you can't lie in church. So I say, I'm going to just go relax and enjoy, and the next thing you know, there'll be a challenge, and then I'll try to go to kickball. So, but for the youth ministry, I just want to tell you that um, I don't care if we have two children in this church, if we have two, we need a youth ministry. And then if there's two kids, and we have anywhere from two, to 52. And then we've had a lot of kids in this church, different ebb and flows, different people coming in and coming out and calling this place on uh, their church home. But the youth are very, very important to us. Amen. Amen. And so um, if you have, if you're gifted in that area, Christian is working on curriculum and working on a plan. Amen. And so we just want to come together and make sure that there's not a kid in here who's going through something and maybe they can't talk to their parents. They need to have somebody here in this church, amen, that they can reach out to, amen, or that they can say, I need someone to pray for me. I need someone to, to know that I have a test coming up in math and that I'm failing math and I might need some help, amen. We need to be a, a, a family that comes together and helps each other, amen. And so um, with that, um, I'm just going to take a second here and ask Tanaya to come up. Um, Tanaya, if I, I can't talk about youth ministry without talking about Tanaya and um, Tanaya, this is her last Sunday before she goes off to the University of Montana um, in Missoula, which I just don't even know what church is going to feel like without her behind me. I, don't, I, can't even, I can't even really picture that, um, and maybe you can't either. Amen. And so Tanaya, your impact here at Living Grace has been so much. Amen. So I just want to tell you about this young lady who has been at this church. And I ask who has been laboring, who's been doing the, who's been laboring for this body. I, I don't even know if there is anyone who's done as much as Tanaya has done in this church. Amen. So Tanaya has acted. Tanaya has sang. Tanaya has performed. Tanaya has worked in the nursery. Tanaya has cooked. Tanaya has swept. Tanaya has vacuumed. Tanaya has worked with the children in this church. Tanaya has served at the rescue mission. Tanaya has sang at the Benefits Hospital. Tanaya has been there for every single thing that we have done in this church. That's good. Amen. I mean, that, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you get the impact on that. Amen. And so at the same time, she's a great student. She was the um, homecoming queen for her school. Um, she is, she, she's just done an amazing job. But the a most amazing part to me is that she'd go to parties and she'd go to homecoming. And then on Sunday morning, she'd be right here. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, how many of you say, you know what, my kids are having a sleepover or they're, they're at a party, I'm going to give them a break on Sunday morning. That doesn't happen in the real man house. I want you to know about that. But the thing is, is I know it's been years and years since they've even asked. 
Amen? Because they know on Sunday morning they're going to come here and they're going to get what they need to get so that they can go out and do what they do. Amen? Yes. And, and so tonight, I know some of that is, I mean, it's just overwhelming to me to think about what we've seen you accomplish, what we've seen you do, the woman that we've seen you grow into. Mm -hmm. um, this, this, this is what it's all about. Amen? I want you to know, church family, this is what it's all about. This is why we do what we do. Amen? We raise up these children and then we're going to send her out into Missoula and we're going to send her out bathed in prayer. Amen. Um, <laughs> amen. Bathed in prayer, holy water, everything you got. I was telling right here. Amen. Um, and, um, and that's just because Tania is a people person. She is a go getter. She's going to be involved and she's going to give up herself. And we just want to pray as she goes. That she that she has that she makes friends with the right people, amen. Yeah. That anyone who comes against her or comes at her who means her harm, and then we rebuke that right yes. now, right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We rebuke that, amen. So we're saving her up. And what's saving her up is I think I should go with her <laughs> because then I can take care of her. You know, I can take care of her and, um, and and go places with her. Go have coffee, go to parties with her. I can just be right there with her everywhere she goes. I don't and think she wants that. <laughs> well, but I know, I know, just like Camille and Latoya know, that God is already there. Yep. And then God is already in Missoula. Amen. God is already there. So God's going to go before her. God's going to be there with her. But church family, um, just... Be in prayer for her. Amen. Yes. Be in Amen. prayer for her. This is one of ours, and I don't care if we're sending her off into the U.S. Air Force. We're sending her off. Amen. She's well equipped. She's laid her heart out right here on this altar. She's laid it out for this church, and we just um, are so proud of her tonight. Amen. Amen. Six. 26. 26 is when school starts. 
All right, so what we do normally is we go, we take a school, we go pray, we lay hands on that school, we take a picture, and then we make a beautiful collage of just our church praying over the schools in our community. Amen? So um, the easiest way to do that is for me to just ask you who's going to pray over Chief Joe? Renee. This will go as quick as you guys want it to. Giant Springs. Right here. Giant Springs. Tanya has Giant Springs Elementary. Lewis and Clark Elementary. I just got hired there. I will take it. <laughs> Gary, was that you saying you wanted Lewis and Clark too? Yeah, me and my mother raised her hand back there. Plus your mother raised her hand back there. All right. <laughs> Anybody want to take Longfellow? You got that, Paulina? Yeah. And Roger? Amen. How about Moy Elementary? Desi and Barry, that's their school that they get. Um, Meadowlark Elementary. Meadowlark, Pam and Jerry. Morningside Elementary. Morningside, does anyone know where Morningside is? You'll find it. You'll find it? Okay. <laughs> David and Rihanna, thank you. It's really close to here. That's our adopted school. That's and that's the school that our church has adopted. Amen. So Morningside is the church that we that we fill the needs if they have clothing needs, if they have food needs, anything that they need. That's the Living Grace Church that we that's the church that Living Grace has adopted. So um, David and Rihanna, thank you for taking those. How about Mountain View? Anybody from Mountain View? I was thinking. I forget where that is. Londa, you got that one? Thank you. How about Riverview? Anybody have Riverview? Okay. If nobody gets it, then Pastor and I get it. Sacagawea? Sacagawea is right by our house, too. We can knock Sacagawea out. How about Sunnyside Elementary? Sunnyside? All right. Valley View? I got it. You got it? Linda? All right. Thank you, Linda. Linda's got Valley View. How about West Elementary? Barb and Don. You know why? Our dog's picking that one? So you can get a milkshake from Ford's Drive In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get with you, but don't talk about my hair. Okay. How about CM Russell High School? You know what? The Thomases always get CMR. Um, how about Great Falls High? I'll take it. Okay. I'll take it. Real Vans, Real Vans got it. Ivy, you want to go there too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Paris Gibson. Christian too. Paris, you got. I'll do Paris Gibson. Great Falls High too. Christian, okay. So Paris Gibson, Ivy. Okay, how about North Middle School? North Middle School, Pam and Jerry? Thank you. That's where Madison will be, right? And how about Foothills? Foothills? Faith and the Bellarines. Cardinals and the Bellarines have Foothills. And how about Central Catholic? Central Catholic is, okay, you guys got that? I was going to say that's close to my office if nobody got that. All right, did I miss any school? East. Did you do East? East Middle School. East Middle School. You guys got it? Okay. Richard and Paulina, amen. Our Lady of Lords and Holy Spirit. They both have schools? Yeah. All right. You got it? All right. Melinda, thank you. All right. So just go lay hands on it. If you can get someone to go with you and just take a picture, not because we want to celebrate, but just we want to show, we want to be able to capture what it looks like. And I'll tell you what, 
I'll tell you what, I don't take it lightly that our kids haven't been injured, amen? I don't take it lightly that we haven't had any school shootings, amen? I don't take it lightly, amen? So we got to actually do what we got to do and battle in prayer, amen? That's so good. we'll battle in prayer for our schools, for the children of Great Falls, amen?
it was about the, the army of Gideon. How many know that story? Hallelujah. So we started out with so many. And he was going to go to the enemy camp. And God had to kind of like bring down to those who would be obedient. And we are his children and we are obedient. Amen. Amen. So it only took 300, but I want to say another thing. I only think it would have just taken one. God. That's it. But he trusted 300 in the, in the Gideon's army to go in and do this wonderful act that we can do now. First thing, women with their light. Hallelujah. You are the light of the world. Amen. Shine for Jesus and for the future.
for you. Because he is power, his promise that when we come into his presence, the enemy must leave. Yeah.
one of my favorite songs. It's one of my favorite songs.
And Michael said, no, it was not the shoes. <laughs> he said, well, well, well it's got to be the shorts. No, it's not the shorts. But it's got to be the shoes. That no, it's not the shoes. He said, it, it, it's got to be your haircut. It's not my haircut. Then it's got to be the shoes. And Michael said, no, it's not the shoes. And so that rings true in some aspects because anybody who's played any type of sport, basketball, baseball, football, knows that your, your shoes don't necessarily make you a better athlete. But your shoes do give you an advantage. If, if you're out on, on wet turf and you've got just regular sneakers on and you've got to make a cut, you're going sailing one way when your opponent's going the other way. Or, or if you're playing soccer or basketball or baseball, you've got to have the right equipment right. on your feet. And it doesn't just bring true for athletes. You ask the nurse that who's worked a 10 hour day and she's wearing the wrong shoes, she's wishing yes. that she could take those things off. You ask the police officer that's been walking back and forth, or maybe the, the security police who's walking back and forth around the plane in boots that just don't fit. Mm. They, 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 there's something going on that they, they need better equipment. They, they, they get an advantage from the shoes. But we as Christians, we don't just get an advantage from having on our shoes. You see, what we get is we get a firm foundation. We, we get the thing that gives us the ability and the strength to do what it is that God has called us to do. They said that when the Romans and the Greeks were, were out and they were conquering all of the world, they said that it wasn't just the strategy and the large numbers of people that they had. They said it was their shoes. You see, because a Roman soldier could to be in different terrain and, and where other soldiers would slip and fall, the Roman soldier had spikes on the bottom of his shoes were over an inch thick or an inch long, and they were able to grip, and they were able to run, and they were able to stand while other people were slipping and falling. And you have shoes that have been given to you that will not only allow you to stand firm when everything is pushing against you, not only will have you take ground when everybody's trying to pull things away from you, you have your feet shod. Amen. Shod with the shoes of the gospel of peace. Amen. If, if you have the ability, we're going to read uh, again, go back to Ephesians because that's where we're standing for a little bit longer. But if you can open your Bible to Ephesians 6, chapter, excuse me, yeah, Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 15. And if you have the ability, stand to your feet, and I'm going to read it for you. And this is what the Word of God says. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in high and heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the blessed breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Paul is again reminding us that there is going to be some type of trouble, tribulations in your life. He's reminding us that if we believe in Christ, if we belong to Christ, there's going to come a point in your walk, in your life, that Satan is going to come and bother you. Right. He, he just can't not do it. Because you represent Jesus Christ to a dying world. Right. Don't you know that every time you walk into a room, you are the light in that room? Right. When you walk into a room, you're, you're, you're salt and light. And he does not want the truth of the gospel being preached to anybody. And so if he can stop you from saying what it is that you're supposed to say, doing what it is that you're supposed to do, he wins. Right. 
That's one more person that maybe didn't get to hear what it was that you had to say. Amen. And the sad reality of it is, you don't know what tomorrow holds for that person. You don't know. And so if he can stop you from saying what it is that you have to say, then he may not have got you, but he got somebody else. Right. There, 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 there is a battle going on, and Paul wants you to understand that, that when that evil day comes, and we don't know when that evil day is, but the reality is there will be some evil day when something comes at you. And so you got to be ready. When I thought about this, I immediately flashed back to my days at Our Lady Rosary School. I went to uh, Catholic school until I was in, I think, the 10th grade, 9th grade was the last grade I, I went to Catholic school. But every day, we got out of school at 3 o'clock. And at 3.05, we would be in the coat room and we'd be taking off our ties or tightening them up one or the other. And we'd take off our shoes and we'd put on our sneakers. And we tightened up our backpacks because we were the only Catholic school in that area. So that meant we had to go past three or four public schools. And it was nothing more fun than for the public school people to do than to beat up the kids wearing the funny color ties. And so we knew we may not have to run, we may not have to fight, but we got ready every day just like we knew it was going to come. It, it, it only makes sense. If you know you're coming under attack, why wait until the attack comes to say, well, I guess I better get my stuff prepared for the battle. If you get ready for the battle during the battle, you've already lost. Right. Mm -hmm. I thought of another thing. I remember I had a friend of mine. Again, I grew up in Philadelphia. This doesn't happen in Montana. I hope not. But we were standing out on the street and we were just drinking a beer. And a girl walked by with a guy from another neighborhood. And he stared at us. And my friend said, hey, he stared at us. I was like, who cares? He's like, no, he can't be walking around here just staring at people. <laughs> okay. You know, so we went in the house, we watched the TV, and he's like, I can't believe he's just staring at us like that. I was like, let it go, man. No, I ain't letting it go. So he called the girl up, and he said, hey, is that guy still with you? And the guy said, you know, got put the guy on the phone and said, well, you know what? We're going to fight because I didn't like the way you were looking at me. Oh. And he said, okay, I didn't like the way you looked, so we're going to fight. Okay, this winter time. So he comes out of the house, and my friend, he's got his jacket off, he's got his t-shirt on, he's got his sneakers on, he, he, he's ready to fight. The other guy comes down, he's got his gloves on, he's got his hat on, he's got his coat zipped all the way up, and he's walking out there. And then he said, all right, we're going to fight. And he unzips his jacket. And I'm shaking my head like, he did not come ready. And the moment he took his jacket and had it halfway down, <laughs> anybody who's been in a fight knows exactly what happened. He wasn't ready for the fight. He talked a good game and he said that he was coming to fight. But you don't get prepared for a fight in the middle of a fight. Amen. And so the time for you to deal with Satan isn't after Satan is tearing down your house and coming against your family and doing all those things. The time to get ready for Satan is today. Right. You need to be prepared. You need to have your gospel shoes on where you can move, stick, and weep. You've got to be able to do what it is that you have to do, but you've got to have your shoes on. Amen. When God is calling us to battle, He's not calling us to battle the way people normally think about going into battle. If I called the men of this church and said, hey, we've got to go take Helen, you'd be thinking, hey, we're going to have to physically go in there and win this battle. But when God is calling the Christian, he's not calling us to battle and fight to win. The reason why he's not calling us to fight and win is because the victory is already won. <laughs>
put on our breastplates, but it doesn't do any good if you don't have shoes on. Anybody who likes to get dressed knows that sometimes shoes make the outfit. You see, because if, if I put on the belt of truth, but I don't know the truth of the gospel, then, then I, I'm, I'm not really putting on that belt of truth. I'm putting on my truth, and my truth doesn't get it done. You see, and if I put on that breastplate of righteousness, but I haven't had the gospel change my life, then I'm putting on my righteousness. And my righteousness can't stand up to anything. My righteousness is as filthy rags. So, so we've got to put on our shoes. We, we've got to have our feet shod. And when we talk about our feet being shod, that means that your life is now a part of the gospel, and the gospel is a part of you. It, 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 it's, it's a past tense. They're on you. They're on you to stay. You're not taking them off. You're not putting them in the corner for special occasions. Amen. You wear them day and night. Amen. First time I wore them. That was what they Chris, they're going right back. <laughs> you got to put them on. You've got to have them on because good boots, good shoes can help you to stand and march and fight and do whatever it is that God is calling you to do. He said, put on the, the, the boots or the, have your feet shod with the preparation. You're ready. You're ready. As children of God, you've got to be ready. Because you never know when it is going to be your call to preach the gospel. All right. Right. You, you don't know. You, you, you're standing in the bank and you're doing whatever you're doing. You're making out your deposit and you're ready to cash the check. And there's somebody in the bank and, 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 and they've got an issue. Yeah. And you can tell they've got an issue because maybe they're rocking back and forth and they're looking around. And, and, and you know something about them and maybe you ask them a question and they say, I'm lost. I'm here to cash the check, but this check is the furthest thing from my mind. And they begin to tell you about how their life is in shambles. And they begin to share with you maybe somebody's sick or maybe somebody's hurt. Or maybe they just don't know which way to turn. That's an excellent opportunity to share the gospel. Amen. I remember my wife, and I, I hope she won't get in trouble for this. But it happened many years ago when she was first working at Social Security. And she got up one day and she went to the ladies' room. And she walked into the ladies' room. And there's a lady in the ladies' room crying. She, she, she's beyond, you know, consoling. My wife tries to talk to her and tries to help her. And long story short, my wife shared the gospel with her right there in the ladies' room. She got up to go and use the restroom. And little did she know that God had a special appointment with her in the ladies' room. Amen. She didn't plan on it. She didn't take a Bible. She didn't have memory verses all laid out. It just happened at that moment. You never know when your time is going to come to share the gospel. Amen. So, so are you ready to share the gospel? Come on. You've got to be ready. Because the gospel, it, it, it is the thing that, how can you have peace if you don't know the truth? Amen. Right? Amen. How, how can you have peace? And, and that's what the gospel is all about. The gospel that Paul is talking about here, he, he wants us to understand that the gospel does two things for us. The first thing that the gospel does for us, it gives us peace with God. You see, because we, we were in a, we were far off. At one point, we were enemies with God. We, 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 we had something going on because our great, 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 great granddaddy, Adam, sinned. And guess what? We perpetuated. We carried it forward. And it talked about us being of the uncircumcised. We didn't even have a relationship with the nation that had a relationship with God. We were, we were far, we were in a mess. There was nothing that we were going to be able to do on our own. And so we were far off. We were enemies with God. Didn't have any hope. We didn't have any chance. But Jesus. Right. You see, Jesus came and he suffered, bled, and died. Went to the cross and paid for all of our sins. Past, present, and future. Amen. He brought us a people that were far off. Now we're drawn near. 
At one point we were enemies with God. Now we're, he, he's our father. He right. loves us. He, call, he calls us his own. It brings us peace. Peace with God. That's something to shout about. Yeah. You can see. You ever had uh, somebody that just didn't like you? <laughs> somebody just didn't like you, and because they didn't like you, they, they could do things to you, maybe because they were older than you, or maybe they had a little more power than you, had a little more clout than you. I was in the military, and I remember this mistake. I had this master sergeant. Did not like me. And how could anybody not like me, right? <laughs> and that's what you're all thinking. But I wasn't always this nice. And I knew he didn't like me. So I would do little things. I couldn't mess with him because he outranked me, but I would do little things, you know, maybe switch appointments. And, well, I better not say anymore. I don't know, statute of limitations. But because he had more power than me, whenever he just stand there at attention and take it, God could have done anything he wanted to do to us. Right. If, if he chose to handle sin differently, he could have said, you know what? I'm going to start all over. Right. I'm going to wipe them out, and I'm going to try it again with a new group. But instead of him flexing his power and his might and wiping us out, he chose to show his power and might by sending his son Jesus Christ to die. Yes. Right. So and instead of him being like probably we would have been, he said, I'm going to show him grace. And I'm going to show him mercy. Amen. He said his son Jesus. Mm. So because of what Jesus did, we not only have peace with God, but we also have the peace of God. Amen. You see, what, what that's helping us to understand is that, do you remember Paul and Silas? Mm -hmm. When they are in that jail, they're in the, they're in the dungeon of the jail. Mm -hmm. You know, they got to they gotta go upstairs to get into the dungeon. They're in there and they're, they're locked up tight. But what are they doing? Praying. They're singing. They're singing. They're singing. They're praying. They're having a good time. How can you do that? Because you understand that God has everything in control. Amen. Yes. He's got it all under control. And when you understand that God has it all under control, it doesn't matter how tight your shackles are. Yes. It doesn't matter how high, how low you are in the dungeon. Because you know that if you're in the dungeon and you're in chains, that God has a purpose and a plan for you to be in the dungeon and you to be. I might have been 
that to Jesus too. Don't you care? Don't you care that we perish? But see, Jesus understood something that the rest of the disciples hadn't really grasped yet. I got this. This storm? That's a wave of my head. This storm? I can simply say the word. I got this. When we have the peace of Jesus, we're able to have heartbreaking situations Amen. and still trust that God is God. Amen. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He's given you a choice. You can hold on to the anguish and the pain and the fear and all those things that got you whirling around, but you can give it to him. Amen. You make a choice. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe ultimately, I've got this. Amen. You want peace? Trust me. Don't worry about what, what anybody else says. Trust me. He gives us his peace. And to be honest, I would be remiss if I stood up here and I just talked about the gospel. And I just talked to you about the peace of the gospel. Mm -hmm. You see, because even though the gospel has tremendous peace perspectives, and it, it, it gives us the peace of God, and it makes peace with God, but there's also power mm -hmm. in the gospel. Amen. You see, see, Paul understood that there was power in the gospel. And maybe you understand that there's power in the gospel. You see, because you tried 12-step programs, you, 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 you tried going to, to different places and hanging around different people, you, you, you maybe said, well, I'm going to move to a whole other place, and that didn't do a thing to you. Amen. But when you heard the gospel, Amen. something changed in you. That, 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 that drink you used to love to drink, somehow that taste was taken out of your mouth. Those funny cigarettes that you used to roll up and keep two or three in, in, in your glove box when you were riding around just in case you had a chance to stop and smoke. You don't want to do those things anymore. Maybe the clubs and the places that you used to go, you, you have no desire to go. And it wasn't because your mama asked you to stop going because you told her you weren't going and you still going anyway. Maybe it was because your wife said, hey, honey, we've got to work on this thing because this marriage isn't going to last. If you're still doing all the things that you're doing, you're like, honey, I'm going to stop it. But you didn't. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until you heard the gospel. Yes. And once you heard the gospel, something started to change and started to stir and started to happen to you. Paul understood that. See, Paul understood that. Paul said that he was the chief of sinners. Paul said that he used to go and look for Christians to terrorize and torment and to kill. Mm -hmm. But then when he met Jesus yeah. and he heard the gospel, Something changed inside of him. And maybe you understand that power because something has changed inside of you. And because something has changed inside of you, you have to have the other aspect of the gospel. You see, it's great to know about the peace and it's great to understand the power, but are you willing to share what you have? Jesus told us to go and make disciples of every nation. He told us to go and tell. The gospel is not going to do what the gospel is intended to do if we just keep it in here. Amen. What we can do is we can take turns. I'll preach it and Camille can preach it and Joe can preach it and Becky can preach it. And we can all take turns talking about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. And we can talk about how we change our lives. We can give testimony upon testimony. Yes. But guess what? I tell Barry my testimony. Barry tells me his testimony. We're both saved and we just keep going back and forth telling each other our testimony. Right. Who else is impacted? Amen. Right. But if Barry tells me his testimony, I tell Barry my testimony, we both agree that Jesus is Lord. And we understand that he is the power. He, he is the thing that saved us. Amen. That he came, he suffered, let him die, and he rose again. And we're willing to go and share that. Amen. Not with just the people that are sitting inside these four walls. Not with the people that we already see carrying crosses and Bibles. Those are conversations. What we got to do is we got to stop having conversations and get back to witnessing. Amen. You see, because it's easy for me to talk to another Christian about Christ. Who I need to talk to is, is the atheist who doesn't want to hear anything about Jesus. Amen. Who I need to talk to is, is the person who doesn't understand that they're a sinner on their way to hell. Right. The gospel needs to be shared. We, we can encourage.
encourage each other. And that's what we're supposed to do. But we got to take the message to the people who need the message. Amen. The world is asking how you can stand when it seems like everything is pressing down on you. When the world is asking you how you can have peace in the midst of the storm. You can tell them it's the shoes. It's the shoes. Because I've got my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yes. You see, I don't leave home without them. They help me jump higher. They help me run farther. They give me the ability to do the thing yeah. that God has allowed me to do. Right. We serve an awesome God. Amen. We serve an awesome God who loves us so much that he wanted peace with us. And the way that he could get peace with us, whether through treaties, it wasn't through bargains, it wasn't through making deals, it was through the cross. Mm -hmm. It was through the cross of Jesus Christ. Yes, and I think if we could keep that thought in mind, we'll have our shoes tied up tight. Amen. Ready for action. Amen. To do what it is that God has called us to do. Amen. 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 Amen.
We pray, Father God, we don't have lots of issues that are going on in lots of places in the world, but we got issues, Lord. We got issues that may be undercover, Father God, and nobody's talking about the Lord, but we're asking you to fix those issues, Father God. Because we know that the issues aren't man-made, Father God, but we know the issues sin, Lord. And so we ask you, Father God, to just have your way, eradicate it. Bless our state, bless our nation, Father God. Help us to once again be that one nation under God, Father. So we can worship you openly and freely, Father God, without fear. And be who you call us to be. Lights and darkness, Father God. Salt to people who need some saving. We thank you, we love you, and pray you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go in peace and may the peace of God go with you.